Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I wanted to show you guys how to use Google Classroom along with all of the other Google Apps for Education to flip your classroom and uh, kind of change how you deliver the content uh, to your students as well as engage your parents with the content. So I just created a little example here that I wanted to show you. You can certainly implement your own strategies, but uh, I thought this was a really unique way that kind of uses all the tools that we've been working on. So the first thing you want to do is log into Google Classroom. And then uh, you can create an assignment here. And we'll call this the video math lesson. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use a few of the different functions with Google Classroom. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to insert a video tutorial lesson uh, that we made previously that teaches the students how to use the area model multiplication method in math. It is a strategy for doing multiplication of two-digit numbers. So we're first going to add a video with our YouTube link button. So we'll just click here. And I'm going to search for it really quick. I don't have the exact URL. So here's the movie we want to show right here. I'm just going to go ahead and click on it and then click Add. This just adds the movie to our lesson. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert an assignment from my Google Drive there. So I'm just going to click Google Drive. And I've saved this assignment in my classroom folder. And it's underneath my folder for flipped classroom. I wanted to make sure that I remembered which lesson it was. And here's the assignment here, flipping math class sample assignment. I'll go ahead and click Add. For this assignment, I'm not going to make a copy of it for every student because it does not require them to edit the document. It's just something they need to see so they can uh, also get a link from it. So I'll just select here, students can view file. I don't want them to be able to edit it. And then I'll go ahead and click assign. And then we'll pop on over to the student uh, account and show you what it looks like from there. Now that I'm back in the student account, you see that we have an email for the video math lesson. And the last one I showed you how to get there through the link. So this one I'll show you how to get there just through the Google Classroom. So click the App Launcher button. Go down here and click More and select Classroom. When it loads up, they will the student will log into your class. And we see our video math lesson here in the Assignments box. It's popped up. So the first thing they'll want to do is they can watch the movie so they can click through this and it'll follow the link to YouTube and it'll go through this movie really quick I'll let a little bit of it play through so you can get an idea of what the lessons about Model multiplication. and so this is just a really simple way for a tens column so for the second number they'll note that in the second number from greatest to least, so they could start over here to the right and say, well, the greatest number is with this. Say if you had a three-digit number. So you get the idea there. The point is to just show them a video lesson of how they can do the math that they're expected to learn. So once they have watched the movie, and they could go back and re-watch it again if they need extra help, or they can pause it, do a step, hit play again. Um, it's important to instruct your students how to use all the controls with the video tutorials. So then they've watched the video. Next part of the assignment is they can click here and look at the actual written assignment. So you notice here I've typed in some directions and you also notice that the students can't edit this. They can just look at it. So I've added a couple things. I have instructions. I have a link here for the students to click on. And I've even, with Google Drawings, I drew a little uh, diagram here of how the students should format their own writing on their paper. And as well, down here at the bottom, I've given them some example problems to work on. So that's all good and well. They can use their scratch paper to work on these. They don't necessarily have to input these into the computer, and I'll show you why here. What I've done is I've created, using Google Forms, uh, just a little quick survey assessment that asks them the same questions as these, numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
And so after the students have watched the movie and practiced their math, they can go in here and they can click on this link and it will give them a Google Forms test. So they would just go through here and complete it, filling in their information. And I'm just going to put in random numbers. So the student has finished their assessment. They can go ahead and click Submit. And they'll get this little lesson. Thank you for taking this math assessment. You can type in whatever you want there. Uh, if you want help with that, you can go back to the Google Forms tutorial section. So I'm going to jump back over to the teacher side of this and show you what kind of magic has been going on while we submitted our test. So now we're back onto the teacher side and I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, in one of the earlier tutorials I mentioned it's very important to keep your classroom files organized by assignment and I'll show you why. It just makes it really easy to find so I know when I want to come in here and see the results of our math assessment, I just want to go into the classroom folder and then remember I saved every document that has to do with this assignment in the flipped classroom folder. And so now you'll see that we have our form here, our assessment, as well as our spreadsheet where we have responses to it. So I'm just going to open this spreadsheet up and show you what we got going on here. If you'll remember one of the tutorials back in the Google Sheets section, I showed you how to use conditional formatting to grade assessments really quickly. So I've just done that here. Uh, you can see our results are coming in. We've had uh, one, two, three, four, five students take the math assessment so far and submit their results. So if we go over here, we can see the conditionally formatted spreadsheet section. And it lists the name of the students. And right along next to this, you can see very quickly in green which answers the students have gotten correct. So I think this could be a really useful tool for teachers, uh, especially if they're trying to flip their classroom. It just takes a few minutes to make these spreadsheets, and then you can use them forever. You can just go in if you want to change some of the questions in the, in the form. You can just go in and uh, amend it in any way you need to. But then you can say when they get to school, uh, the next morning, a teacher can look at this really quickly and see, oh, well, Jon Snow, Queen Khaleesi, and Jenny Smith really didn't do so well on their assessment. They each only got uh, one or two problems right out of all six. So these students I need to put into a group and give them some extra intervention. Maybe uh, reteach this or try and teach the concept in another way. And you can see along here that also uh, Arya Stark and Tyrion Lannister, well, they got six for six right. So they have this concept down. It's mastered, and they can maybe move on and be in a group that works on something else. Um, maybe even have these students partner up with the other students that struggled and reteach them one-on-one -on -one, uh, some helpful strategies. So the point of doing all this is just to try and uh, free up time for teachers to have more time for direct instruction. I know it can be a hassle if you're giving out a quiz or a test every week trying to grade all of those and get back timely assessments. And so here is just a way to um, spend a little extra time up front creating the assessments and the videos as well as the spreadsheets. But then once you have those created, you can have them for life and you won't have to also keep up with, uh, you know, stacks of 30 papers every time you pass out an assignment. So hopefully this helps you save some time uh, and if you do, go ahead and spend that time doing something fun. Treat yourself. You deserve it. And teachers work hard. If you have any questions on this uh, tutorial, leave them in the comments section. And I'll try and do my best to reply to all of them. Thanks and have a good day.